everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we're really excited today. We are here to talk about the latest movie, the beginning of a new series for Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. We're talking about True Justice Family Ties. And <laughs> I am Phil Good Grace Wagner. And today I have with me a fan of the podcast and attorney at law. We have James Butts here. And James, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me, Rachel. I've been enjoying your stuff for many years and it's Glad yeah. to finally get to talk to you. Yeah, it's really fun. I mean, we uh, we have interacted over the years on Twitter. And uh, <laughs> so when I was looking for somebody with some kind of legal background that might be able to help with this, you offered. And I was so grateful. And since you're a first time on the podcast, why don't you introduce yourself, tell the audience a little bit about you yourself and and uh, and what you do for your career. I'm, my name is James. That's, I'm an civil rights and employment attorney in Birmingham, Alabama. I've been practicing for 16 years now after I graduated from the University of Alabama in 2007. And I do mostly these days, I do administrative work where I pour through a lot of the less glamorous parts of law, but it's fine. You get to wade through (laughs) documents relating to government misconduct, which was really handy when I was reviewing this because oh, yeah, <laughs> I happened, but it was it was fun. Yeah, and I really have been enjoying enjoying Hallmark because I got into it several years ago. I was bored. I was like, "Hey, wait a minute! The people behind Hallmark Hall of Fame have Christmas movies," and then uh-huh. they and it was and then they had that they introduced us to the more heartwarming movies and mystery stuff, which, and mm-hmm. I've been hooked ever since. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, they, so you, you they, started fairly recently in the last like five or six years, you started watching Hallmark movies about six or seven years ago. I've watched okay. it off and on, but then they did, they did sign seal delivered higher ground and loving mm-hmm. Leia as a double feature. And then it that was, guy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can see those are two of my favorites. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What do you love about Hallmark movies? They're great because they, most movies, they tend to focus on people who are from like very august and fancy backgrounds. And that's not most people I know. Mm -hmm. And so it's nice to have like more ordinary people. Mm -hmm. It's also nice because not everything has to be dark and depressing and gritty because i deal with enough of that at work right (laughs) yes so getting away from that is lovely yeah so do you have a favorite of the mystery shows that you have have enjoyed over the years my favorite there's it's really hard to say there's two that they're probably the best probably my personal is probably Martha's Vineyard but if you ask oh, me on the okay. wrong day it might be Darrow and Darrow because those are also really good yeah but yeah I really enjoyed Darrow and Darrow uh, I I think it was almost at a sort of a different level than some of the others but it like this yes. show was a courtroom procedural as opposed to a uh amateur sleuth detective show mm-hmm. yeah which and... I, I think I enjoy more I I think that with these hallmark mystery shows you can either choose to be like dark and gritty or you can Mm -hmm. like kind of lean into the camp a little bit more Mm -hmm. and i think the ones that lean into the camp a little bit more are more my jam i think uh, we're tea garden and cross hill mysteries Mm -hmm. uh as far as the amateur sleuths uh were you know my favorite i kind of the the one thing i like about some of the grittier stuff and like the appeal of Martha's Vineyard is they have, you can only watch so many jilted spousal killings and mm, mm-hmm. sometimes just having a, a more detailed conspiracy plot that you get with money conspiracies. It's yeah. just, those can be, those, those, those puzzles can be interesting and those. Yeah. Well, and sometimes it's, it's to- just, it's just too ridiculous that like yes. is everybody in these people's lives like dying and, <laughs> and they don't even like feel sad at all. <laughs> yeah. That that's the nice thing about the ones that are set in slightly larger localities. Like that is one advantage yeah. this series will have is Philadelphia is a big enough place that they can have lots of murder without anyone questioning. Yeah. How are they how is anyone still living here? 
We'd like to take a second from this episode of the podcast to celebrate our sponsor of this episode, and that is the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast? Do you want an inside scoop into what happens on the podcast? Do you want early access to episodes and loads of cool perks? Now is the time to become a patron of Hallmarkies podcast. By becoming a patron, you get to access our patron Facebook group. You can request episodes or even be a guest on the podcast. And most importantly, any patron can join our monthly movie watch-alongs with stars like Paul Campbell, Natalie Hall, and more. It's as low as $2 a month to join in and become a special part of the Hallmarkies family. Please consider, and we will love you forever. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. Let's dive in. Let's talk about uh, true justice family ties. Mm -hmm. And this, I mean, it's, it's a little, we can imagine that there, we're going to get more of these because it seems like it true justice. And then there'll be different names, but um, so far, I think curious caterers, like the only one that we've gotten any sequels to of the last couple of years, we've just been getting all these one-offs. Which is weird. That's my understanding as well, is that they've they they keep had, it's like they're trying, but they don't Yeah. Want, like we had to... um we had the one off with the uh family histories. We had uh we had the sister sluice one off. We had mm-hmm. uh the um cut and color one one yeah. off. We had uh Francesca Quinn. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and uh, and so and the one with uh, we had the one with um, uh, with Jody Sweeten. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had Dancing Detective. I mean, we just had a ton of these yeah. ones. So I don't know what they're waiting for because some of them it seems it seems like like Mysteries Lane. Um, I don't know. It seemed like it did pretty well. So I'm not sure what they're waiting for, you know, or what they need for all these pilots. Yeah, they they may not know themselves because yeah. I get <laughs> the impression true. that they're wanting to do some kind of rebranding, but I don't know mm-hmm. what they're trying to achieve. Yeah, unless it's, it's like they're trying to do a new. They're trying to rebrand without a brand. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and I well, feel that it, way not just with the mysteries, but with the regular channel as well. Yeah. It's almost like that rebrand Harlequin did about 20 years ago when they decided they were going to be upscale and literary and everyone and it flopped. And the only thing that succeeded was the one little experiment that was experimental line that was for the younger versions of their existing audience that everyone poo-pooed was the one thing that actually took off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Which maybe they're just going through that phase. I mean, I guess maybe it makes sense. They don't have a CEO right now. So, uh, you know, it's, it's just kind of a mess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, we got this true justice family ties. And it's uh, it's a law school student and her and her friends set out to prove her brother's innocence. But the only way to clear his name is finding the real killer. And uh, this stars Catherine McNamara, Markian Tarasik, Nikki DeLoach, uh, Ben Ayers, uh, the list goes on. And it's written by Nikki DeLoach and Megan McNulty. And uh, overall, what did you think? Did you think this was a decent pilot? It was a, for a pilot, it was fairly decent. Uh-huh. They made, it, it came very close with just a few tweaks, I think it could have been spectacular. Mm-hmm. And, but some of those may have just been things they had to do to do a pilot to get to where they wanted to set up everything else. But I think it was just a few tweaks. It could have been so much better because they, it, and it just like a few hours of research. I came, I yeah. was, came up with a couple ideas that just, surprised me that they didn't think of yeah i basically agree i would watch more like it won me over enough to be like okay i would watch more episodes of this i mean i don't really expect like super legal realism from these uh these shows uh there's 
uh, there's a pretty good YouTuber. I think his name's Legal Eagles or Legally. Anyway, where he, yes. he he watches these shows and he points out all the you know the legal mm-hmm. problems shows and movies and it's it's entertaining and uh, and interesting uh, to see. And so he can have a field day with this, sh- <laughs> this show. <laughs> yes, uh, but I liked the casting enough. And I thought that they all kind of worked well enough together that I was willing to sort of forgive so much of it that was ridiculous. Yeah. And and, uh, so much of the plot was just like, none of this would be admissible in a court of law. None of this would be allowed. (laughs) Why are they the only people that seem to be investigating any of these things? Like nobody, because at least in the amateur sleuth uh, stories, they, there is a detective who is looking at, you know, looking at these things. And, and uh, especially once another person ends up die, you know, dead, then Mm -hmm. there's not a single detective who's like involved and is aware Mm -hmm. of, of what's going on. And, uh, and the, the biggest problem that I had with this movie is that there was no reason to have them be students that if they no. had been fresh new lawyers coming into the practice, you know, whatever kind of a thing or the DA office, if they were new lawyers that then so much more of what they did would have made sense but the fact that they're supposedly law students it 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 just there's no way that students would be granted all of the access to all the discovery all the access to 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 all the witnesses yeah everything going on especially when they have somebody that's so intimately related to well two people related to Mm -hmm. uh or involved with the case they, they would especially not be allowed access to all of this. And, and so no. that that's where the, the, I think the biggest flaw, and they were just talking about flaws first, but the biggest problem was there was no reason to make them students. No. Cause if, if there were new lawyers, that would have, they would have, it could easily have justified everything because yeah, right? in Pennsylvania and you have, there is a, you have a one shot, chance to re-examine a criminal conviction where you get to redo everything yeah you have a year after the case is over if they had been admitted after the case the original trial was over but before then the def- the brother would have been handed the trial transcript and all that evidence they got and said here you're on your own find someone and mm-hmm. it would have made total sense that these that they would have decided to to do that yeah <laughs> and it's they would like have had a they, deadline they wanted to have uh, I know there's that show how to get away with murder um, with, with Viola Davis. And she's a professor, I think it's like, they really wanted to, I've yes. never seen that show, but it's like, they really wanted I'm it either. to be, it, it's like, they really wanted it to be that show and, and have Nikki be the, the professor, but you still could have had them be new attorneys coming back to their professor or even they could have been like teaching assistants or something, something like that. That would have made mm-hmm. more sense. Yes, a lot more sense. Yeah. And right? it also would have explained why they're the only people doing it. Because if you because once the case was well and truly over. There wouldn't be anyone they would the guy would be on his own mm-hmm. and they would have the power to do all of this stuff, because if they were filing a collateral attack motion the judge could subpoena all this evidence that they're having trouble getting and they would they could legally get it because the judge could say yes run these forensic tests i am i i this judge think you should do it and Mm -hmm. that would have made plus a lot of the stuff they're asking for once the case over the brother would have gotten it there's no reason for them to put their everything on the line to get it when they can get most of this stuff Mm-hmm. Yeah, they would have been able to get warrants and subpoenas and things like that. Yeah, for, for and the stuff. Yeah, and it, it just that was that really took me out of it. it's like okay, this is one of those. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the, the movie starts out with Marcus, the teenager, that he is standing over this this woman has been murdered. He's standing over her body and he takes her necklace. And we, he was never really called out 
for that by anybody that so instead of like trying to help the woman or whatever mm-hmm. he um he takes the necklace uh, mm-hmm. and uh, he starts to run and and then he gets you know chased down and uh and i mean all he would have had to have done is just be like somebody needs to help this woman he's not yeah. a suspect at all yeah well and and if he hadn't taken the necklace he wouldn't have gotten automatic life cuz pennsylvania only allows that if you're if it was because it was a robbery yeah i yeah so i mean i don't if he if, like of course he was suspected because he was literally with the body and he was taking the necklace and yeah. not trying to get help for her. So it was, yeah. uh, <laughs> it was interesting. That but was he he's, he's captured. And, but then immediately the, the big, like the big class discussion is about human error. And uh, it, which was kind of, again, kind of funny because of course, like, of course they're going to suspect this guy that's literally mm-hmm. standing over the body and yes. not trying to get help for this woman. Yeah, that would that is not the kind of thing where human error normally is discussed in law schools being the kind of thing that you would that witnesses make mistakes. They do, do make mistakes. Mm-hmm. But that's generally not the example you use yeah because <laughs> that was huh yeah. plus also just the way they were talking to each other you're not i get that these are very new law students because they're like early second year is what they said later but that's not how you talk about people in court and they drill you this into your head that that is not an appropriate way to talk to each other which was a reoccurring theme in this movie because the way they treated the boyfriend of the victim he was you're not supposed to talk like to people like that yeah ever yeah. you don't ask yeah. questions like that that's just totally inappropriate mm-hmm. well and then the big and thing second, that, that courtroom procedurals always get wrong is that i mean this didn't have any jury any jury time really but mm-hmm. um they courtroom procedurals they almost always get wrong is they have the lawyers go up to the jury which you never have no you, you never. have to stay behind the table yes <laughs> <laughs> but uh but, but yeah so they get in a little spat uh her and um and mark in and uh he he's the uh the girlfriend uh and he, he's the boyfriend of the woman who was murdered he she's the sister of the the you know the boy who's just been uh has just been convicted and uh so yeah i mean they're gonna come into blows with each other um but i thought they were pretty good together i i liked them as a match yeah they 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 did seem to have a when they when there was an artificial just tension they were great together and i think i wish they'd gotten to have more time doing things together because that was one of the highlights of the movie for me at least yeah and uh and I thought that the the kid who played Marcus, the teen, I thought he did a pretty good job showing like getting a panic attack and and uh, all that. He did. So he did a good job with stacking, and um, and so he's convicted, and and, uh, and so the the so the DA uh, and I forget his name, the DA, he um, something Quinn. He's the father of. Davina, who's been killed, right? No, it's the DA's and the DA's friends with the the dad. Uh, oh, just the, friends. Yes. Oh, so that old man, he wasn't the DA. No, no. Um, Benjamin oh, Ayer's okay. character is the DA. Oh, oh, I thought that he was like the head. I got a little confused with that. I guess. Okay, okay. So he's just they didn't a friend explain it very well. DA. Oh, yes. Got it. Got it. Okay um and uh and yeah we didn't get very much ben airs he's barely in this yes and that was a pity because they they could have used that character a lot better Mm -hmm. than they did Mm -hmm. because he could have smoothed over some of the difficulties that they they faced and it legitimately 
particularly in Philadelphia, that would be the the DA's office is the people who would have cleaned up most of these yeah. messes. And they take that more seriously than the average DA's office. So they say that only the necklace was tested for fingerprints, which doesn't really make sense because why would they even test the the necklace for fingerprints? He's literally carrying it when they arrest him. Like, yeah. He they, took it off of her body. Of course his fingerprints are going to... Like, that would be a waste of time. Of course his fingerprints are going to be on it. He was carrying it. Yes. And it wouldn't... Yeah, that... That's not really... <laughs> <laughs> why would you say... Why would you test for something that he's holding when they arrest him? That makes no mm -hmm. sense. Yeah, because it, it, that would be really odd. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you might do it just to be thorough because... Especially I guess maybe a, if you were trying to see if there were other fingerprints, I guess, maybe. Yes. But I don't know. I mean, it, it was just it was just funny. Yeah. And I mean, and then I guess maybe if there were other fingerprints, like if the if the maybe the strangle marks or whatever didn't match him or something. Yes. There was something to muddle it up a little bit more. But um, you, but like 99% of people, if they were to find a woman dead, a body like that, they would be like, oh, my gosh. You know, like, like, yeah, that's so that's the normal human response to be like, Somebody like, yeah, they if they wanted to make him sympathetic, they should have they should have had him high on drugs or something, because that's yeah, literally agreed when these mistakes happen and people do what he did and they're innocent. Nine times out of ten, it's because they're on drugs mm -hmm. and they're not thinking clearly. Right. And that yeah. actually is a thing that sadly does happen. Or I think like they're with a group and like somebody else in the group was actually responsible or there's something yes. kind of more like that. So the fact that he just, I guess, kind of like stumbled on her or something. Yeah. I guess. Apparently but he's like, well, that... I can take this necklace. Yeah, that was... Not maybe the most logical way to do that. <laughs> no, <laughs> to no. to set up that intro. Yeah, he's just like, is this guy a sociopath? Like, you would be upset. Like, I don't know. It was it was interesting. Today's episode of the podcast is sponsored by W Rated, the podcast where we willingly watch the world's worst rated movies. Join me, Daisy. And me, Claire, as we break down the IMDb Bottom 100, choosing a different film from the list every episode. We take a deep dive into the plot, production, release and reviews, usually with a special guest, to uncover if these films are truly as bad as everyone says they are. You can find us on Spotify, Apple, Good Pods and anywhere else you find your podcasts. Access to Discovery. And again, there's no way that students would be allowed access to discovery. Like, I don't think just like anybody is allowed like access to evidence and discovery. Yeah. The only way they could have gotten it, the only way they could have legitimately gotten it is if the case had been over and it, it would have all been had to be given to the brother and the brother could have given it to them and that would have worked. Which brother? Oh, oh, you mean to the, the defendant, to, to the defendant. Oh, did they? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Right, 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 right. Got the it. defendants get every, the defendants get everything at the end of the mm -hmm. case. They, the, it's all in, it's all in a transcript that they're at the end of a case. Once the public defender's done and they would have to do post-conviction remedies, they're given, here's everything. Go good luck. So he would mm -hmm. be completely on his own with no resources. But he would have that and he could give it to them. Yeah. But he would have no lawyer at that point. And so it would and make sense that they would. So then help. like they go through all these things to get Eli to give them to to go to the DA to get the evidence so that then they can mm -hmm. test the evidence. And they're really not supposed to give the evidence to non to people like that. Um, but no. they do anyway. <laughs> and, uh, and then they start doing all of the uh the testing and they find prints on Davina's watch. That's like a big woo. <laughs> yeah, no. Um 
So then they have three names come up uh, that are, are, are possible suspects uh, that they have. And uh, do you did you think that any of those three were going to be the actual murderer? No. no. I, <laughs> I was confused. I was thrown off by one red herring later, but not any of these people that did remotely buy it for a second it was just yeah i mean no they they really tried to sell that this teller guy was the uh the the you know the big red herring was the big mm-hmm. you know that uh, he's like a bad man of business he's a jerk he's having an affair all of those things mm-hmm. yeah yeah the problem is is he's the per- he's ironically the one person that a bunch of law students could have investigated like like when i watch this i ask myself of all of these clues, which ones could my law school classmates and I have actually dug up? The, mm-hmm. the the stuff that they were just, the name they were just given of him, that's the one thing we probably could have found on our own without breaking any rules. Because right. just being a big real estate developer, just using our legal knowledge of all the various permits he has to file and just getting their names and then waiting through social media for his weird car. Or yeah when it sounds like society his, pages would be something that a law student could easily do. yeah that's what i was gonna say is it sounds like he was fairly fairly out in the open about this affair it sounds like a lot of people knew about it uh, that it wouldn't be like super hard yes. to to and if if davina was having this affair with this powerful person like yeah you definitely want to look into that for sure yeah and that would be something that that's not the kind of thing that they would m- they never explained why no one else was looking for that yeah. aside from just the obvious fact that that he, he was they grabbed the necklace and yeah. they weren't thinking he was standing that was, over the body yeah i mean that was <laughs> um, yeah and the uh, uh, please. the the minute they introduced this wife character Which, which I was a little, I felt like at certain points in the movie, they called her Mia. I was like, who's Mia? And then they called her Rachel. So I'm, I'm not really, I was a little bit confused about that. But, um, but anyway, the wife, <laughs> I wrote in my notes, wife, yes, wife, realtor, um, you knew, I knew a hundred percent immediately. I'm like, okay, she's it. She's the, she's. Well, it had to be her. She's the yeah. only person that they've established that these kids having the ability to catch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if this were if this were one of the more harder mysteries like a Darrow and Darrow or Martha's Vineyard or even a Chronicle mystery, it could have been someone else because they are capable of catching someone else. But Right. That's a good point. Yeah, that's they true. Didn't, didn't give you but because they didn't lean into the legal any of the things that these people learned in law school, which is the thing I was waiting for is these people are in law school. They are probably one of the few times in their lives where they're actually going to spend time saying like the nitpicky weird laws that most people don't, even most lawyers don't pay attention to about weird various records that are kept about. Yeah. Things. And they never used any of it. Yeah. Oh, especially second I year. Was waiting when for, you, you do the most of that kind of. That's when you're taking, yeah. you're taking corporation law, mm-hmm. all the. to find out who actually owns a piece of property what you have to file if you want to to sell securities and and all of that has been really useful to me in my practice in trying to do investigations i mean i sometimes have to do fact investigation and when i do this is the kind of stuff i really use in the real world Mm -hmm. and they would know how to do it and it could have been they could have used it and that really it irked me since they sometimes in some of their other mysteries, Hallmark does have characters go through tax records and mm-hmm. security camera footage and some of those things that really would work. Yeah. What I think worked better than honestly our two leads uh, was our co lead, our, our supporting uh, players, because they were like Liam, I thought was probably the best character in the whole yes. movie. Because, I mean, he was an, an existing detective. He had a practice, basically. Like, his yes. involvement made sense. His work with the, you know, with the uh, with the case 
Uh, he is an established investigator uh, into you know insurance fraud mm-hmm. and other things like that. So like, and I just thought that that he was funny and uh, uh, Alexander Nunez is the name of the actor. Mm-hmm. I I don't know him, but I thought he was really good. And uh, I think him and Sarah yeah. bantering back and forth was really fun. And uh, mm-hmm. so I think it was. that that was the surprise of the movie. Yes, I was. I was not expecting. I was not expecting that. But he was very charming, and I could see where they're going with it. And it actually made they, they it made sense that he could do some of the things that he did because it worked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's clever and interesting, and he can and all the things that he most of the stuff he did, he actually should be able to do. Right. That's when I was. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, so I look forward to seeing more of him. I think uh, that. Uh, that, like I said, him and Sarah were the highlight. They were they were fun. He kind of had a little bit of like Donald Glover vibes a little bit to me. Yes, that you're right. Yes, mm-hmm. he was good. Um, and so uh, one of the vic- one of the possible suspects is checked off right away because he was in a victim support group on Wednesday night. His alibi check off, and uh, and then. Um, and then they uh, they check the other guy off, and then the and then the big suspect, uh, this uh, this um, this teller guy that he um, that they spend quite a bit of time on, they uh, he ends up turning up dead, <laughs> and uh, and so yeah, so that I mean that you even know you even knew even more that of course it's it's going to be the wife like obvious yes because there's no one else well, they didn't have we didn't know anyone else there was no other suspect in existence at this point mm-hmm. because yeah. every other at least that we met mm-hmm. so we find out that this this older man that i thought was the da i guess i wish we'd had we'd met more people yeah yeah so we find out that uh that he had motivation for killing this teller guy. And, um, uh, but he, they have this whole scene and he says, you aren't your brother. You're nothing like him. And, uh, and so they kind of, he's, he, they start to build that relationship between her, him and Catherine McMahon's character. And this yes. is where I said, they should have just been young lawyers. Students don't, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> no. No, it, it, it doesn't. If they if they had been if they'd been if they had to be students, then they needed to be third years doing what's called a third year practice internship where they actually would be handled cases under supervision. But two L's a can't do that. And three, mm-hmm. there's no way that something this sensitive would be handled by third years. A, a newbie lawyer. A newbie lawyer. Sure. That actually does happen. Yeah because it's not a perfect world and if it's a post conviction review and you don't have anybody else right and you have a deadline because deadlines are strict in the legal system and if you miss the deadline to get the new evidence in which in Pennsylvania are really strict right you're really out of luck yeah and yeah. i was kind of hoping we'd get the calendar of them just having every day of just marking down the days until we're out of luck and we can't get my brother out because that yeah. would have been, it would have made things so much tenser if they're pulling sheets of paper that and that number of opportunities is dwindling and dwindling mm-hmm. and dwindling. Yeah. Especially once Teller is, is dead because <laughs> at that point, then not only is he gone and is gone as a suspect, but, but, uh, any access to anything that he knows and uh, mm-hmm. any, any information you would have would also be gone. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, and so, yeah, I agree. And uh, they, they said, well, why did you turn out so much better than your brother? And they, they, I guess this is supposedly their explanation for why he didn't get help or why he stood over the body. Uh, and she says, trauma is a wild card. You fight, you fly or you freeze. Is what they say. Yeah, that I I I wonder if maybe there was just there was more there, but they had to cut it for time, mm-hmm. and they just cut more than they should have. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that yeah. was weird. That was weird. Um, and so they, they, they have the big teller that it was the suicide was staged, which they find out immediately. And, uh, he is murdered. And, uh, and then we also find out the teller's prints are not a match for Davina's watch. No, mm -hmm. you can't get, there's no way they could have gotten the, they could have gotten those prints run without a court order. Certainly not on that timetable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was. Um, so then we find out that I guess Eli was in a big fight with Davina, and uh, and then she admitted that she was in love with someone else, and and so then she gets really mad at Eli about this. Like you didn't want to tell us this. Like why is he even involved in this case at all? <laughs> like he's a he's a like the last person that you want involved in investigating this case is the boyfriend of the victim yeah that was i just talk about trauma <laughs> yeah that that would <laughs> but that was just something i had to roll with <laughs> yeah i mean i i didn't really quite get why she was so offended that he like how dare you lie to me about this uh, when she didn't really even ask him very many questions. No. Well, it, that was, for me, that was probably the most irksome thing about this movie was just how so turn on a dime irrational that, that, that well, it, it's like, yeah, they, they were, they would turn on a dime between being very supportive and then just incredibly hostile. And they didn't yeah. transition how dare it very you? well. How dare you? And, they needed his, they, they never explained why, and they never, I get she has, they explained very clearly she had issues with him, just for reasons that were never, they alluded to, but never satisfactorily explained. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. She's this, obviously, very wants much to protect her brother, and this does not seem, you either, mm, she needed to either commit to he's helping or he's not. Mm -hmm. And especially I didn't see if she was so like outraged. I mean, I guess when I just didn't see why she was so outraged at him when she didn't even really ask him any questions. Like this seemed like a detail that, yeah. I mean, well, because no. she, because he hadn't told her that he'd had a fight with Davina that would almost seem like given the state of their relationship and that Davina's having this big affair, of course he had a, like a disagreement with her. Like that to me was not like some like, Oh my gosh, how could you keep this incredible, like huge thing like away from us? It seems like it was uh, almost I, without I, saying. Yeah. It, it didn't make sense. <laughs> We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies merch store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies merch store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. <laughs> Yeah I, yeah, I didn't understand. Um, and so then she's like talking to this guy, the the this guy Frank, uh, and and then she hears on the phone it's this guy's uh, fingerprints that are on uh, the watch and everything, and and uh, so he killed Teller, and we think for a second, oh, did he kill Davina? And um, I didn't, but no. Um, so yeah, his fingerprints are, so yeah, this guy, Frank, his fingerprints are all over with Teller and everything. And so he killed Teller. Um, he, uh, he's angry at what he did to 
that um the wait is this guy Davina's father dad yeah yeah yes yeah so he's really angry about what this about what teller did to his daughter he kills teller and uh, it was a pretty good scene because she, <laughs> she gets the call and saying oh it's it's his fingerprints uh <laughs> at the crime scene and uh and he's right behind her when he gets oh it was that the was, best scene that, in the movie that was pretty effective yeah it was very effective it was like <laughs> it was one of the best scenes they've that Hallmark's had in a while. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> and and so then they set up this whole stakeout to try to catch the the wife because she was definitely it was again obvious that she was the one. And uh so they have this whole like uh meeting where they were gonna she was gonna buy this place or whatever, she's real estate. And uh, they have it all bugged and whatever. And mm-hmm. and uh, she confronts her about Davina. Um, Kurt wouldn't do it, so I did. <laughs> she grabs her neck. And, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, so she's, she's guilty, guilty, guilty. Yes. <laughs> and then we find out that Marcus, Marcus gets dismissed. Although I would still think that he could probably have some um some uh i would still think he could be found somewhat cr- criminally negligent for taking the necklace and just standing if there she, it, assuming she was dead when he got there which it which it looked like to me he would be guilty of some degree of larceny depending on how valuable the necklace was yeah and wouldn't you isn't it like don't you have some kind of like responsibility to like like not not playing with a crime scene but like i don't know it just seems like you should didn't you have some responsibility to help somebody like that i guess not but the it, it, that's a complicated question now if but i got the impression that she was dead when he came upon her body mm-hmm. which would uh, obviate those issues because mm-hmm. you don't have to help some if you can't do it you don't you're not obligated to do it and so mm-hmm. The prosecution. I guess might there's not good Samaritan laws and stuff that protect people, but still, I don't know. But uh, but anyway, he's he's let go. Um, we forgot that he was like beaten in prison. Like he had like a blue up black eye and stuff. Yes. Like, oh. <laughs> and uh, they they announced that we're the team of justice warriors. She's offered mm-hmm. a big position at the DA. She's turned it down. And she's going to be part of the conviction integrity unit. So those are two. And that's and that's why I sort of was forgive some of the problems with this movie is I think it was obviously I think the movie was partially written backwards from who did it and from that scene. And a lot of the mistakes, the legal weirdness was to was they had they wanted it to be the wife. It seems like they wanted the wife to do it. Yeah. And it's really hard for law students to, without doing something sketchy, catch that kind of case when no one else did, Mm -hmm. as opposed to a money crime where you actually could do it. Right. Or, and they wanted, and this, some of this is the story of how these law students become whatever they're going to become in the next movie. Yeah. And so then he's like, I'm sorry I didn't tell you about the fight with Davina. And uh, and he apologizes and he says, uh, he says, I'm going to do my best to be the man you believed in. <laughs> That's a good line. <laughs> yeah. That needed yeah. more build up. Yeah. than We got. Yeah. Uh, but it was it was I thought a pretty swoon worthy. It, <laughs> it was. He, he, the, the, they did it. The, the chemistry and the charm was there. Yeah. And that made this movie better than it otherwise would have been. Agreed. Yeah, one thing you had mentioned on Twitter is uh, we were chatting. Um, you said that uh, one of the big mistakes that they made was skipping the sentencing and post-trial yes. stages. Uh, why do you yes. think that was a big mistake? While they are very truncated for this specific type of murder, because I did look them, you have in Pennsylvania, like in most states, there are procedural 
things that happen after a case is over where you just make sure that where you can object to things and get stuff on the record before an appeal. This is a stage in a case when getting new evidence in is light years easier than it will ever be ever again. So you would have this deadline where these law students or these young attorneys, if you do this, probably, they would have a window where they can supplement the record and they would have access to subpoenas or they could ask for them. But if you don't, if you miss your window, it's almost impossible to ever get it again unless you can have a ridiculous amount of political pull or public attention. And I just had this image, if you could show them yeah. working to do this frantically against this hard deadline where they have a chance, but they have to meet this deadline. Yeah. That it could get really tense. Like, are we going to do this in time? Are we going to make, can we, can we get this done? Any small setback could then become a huge, scary thing, because even if it's normally something you could fix, are we, is it going to be done in time? Mm -hmm. And if you can get partway there to get your hearing, then if you even if you can't prove everything, you could have a courtroom scene where the judge is like, I'm not sure if you proved it, but I am concerned. And now I, this judge, am going to order additional rounds of forensic testing and all the warrant issues that we were talking about earlier go away mm -hmm. because a trial judge can say, I am concerned. I want this stuff tested. I order that it be tested and it will be tested. Yeah. <laughs> because the police don't want to. <laughs> Yeah, don't want to be in contempt, and they could risk their whole case getting thrown out. Even on IMDb, in the they 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 say in the U.S. legal process, sentencing does not happen directly when the jury returns a guilty verdict. There is a procedural delay while the prosecution and defense make their case for the sentence. The appropriate corrections agency to evaluate the defendant to make recommendations, and even the potential for a hearing in which impact statements and other mitigating factors are presented and evaluated. This movie is just not an accurate depiction of the true legal practice. Now, to be fair, to be fair to this movie, I did look at, I did look up Pennsylvania sentencing law. <clears throat> In this one very specific type of murder, Pennsylvania sentencing processes are extremely, are more truncated mm. because it's not like capital murder where they have to go through even more because the death penalty is involved. And yeah. obviously death is something that the government and because there is only there's almost no discretion for sentencing in this type of murder in the course of a robbery that there would be for other types of murder yeah that wasn't as unrealistic as it would have been if they had picked any other state i don't but know i agree they... with you it would have provided like a timeline yes that, that would have that would have added to the suspense because yes they've got this thing they've got to they've got to get everything done before the sentencing and so it that would especially yeah. if he's getting like beat it up and stuff <laughs> it also it also the other thing it would have given them is they would have had probably the probation department would have been looking at everything mm -hmm. and if the probation officers started getting suspicious that maybe there was something hinky they could have uh, not been the anonymous source for all sorts of things and they would have the ability to do all mm -hmm. sorts of things because they can because yeah. they would have to have the right to ask for hey police give me that let me look at everything yeah. because i have to do this report to decide how long a sentence this guy's gonna get and that's not a request mm-hmm I think, though, the thing that's, like, most important about, because a lot of times pilots of shows, you know, they get sort of some of these technical stuff kind of, like, wrong. And mm -hmm. yes, a lot of times they don't look like the best. And But I think mm -hmm. when, when you, what you have to do when examining a pilot is you have to look at the bones. And are the yes. bones there? And I would say that in this case, the bones are there. They have uh they not only have, like, two very attractive and competent and, mm -hmm. you know, good actors as far as your leads of Markin and Catherine. They were good. They had chemistry together. They bounced well off each other. Uh, so I think that that was good. And then mm -hmm. they had the maybe even more compelling secondary characters with Liam and Sarah. Uh, Sarah being sort of the nerdy forensic person. Liam being yes. the, the, the investigator. Uh, really, you know, funny and, mm -hmm. and well done. Um, and then you even have Nikki and, and Ben 
kind of your uh, uh like if you were going to say law and order kind of your they always had sort of the da that they would mm-hmm. talk to you know and kind of get advice from yes uh it on law and order um so you've got them kind of in there and so all of those bones i think is good and and uh, i got the impression that if there is going to be a next one like either they'll be finished school or almost finished school you know she's talking about this internship and this mm-hmm. tr- this justice um mm-hmm. tr- justice warriors yes. everything like that if it was going to be me i would say the next one just have them be completely done with school have that be a non-issue and then they can yeah. you know still go back to oh their favorite professor nikki for advice yeah. or whatever um, and if yeah and yeah. if they're also representing people at the at one of these collateral hearings, all other issues go away. Yeah. Every yeah, if they, th- this is very easy. Once they get what obviously they're going to, most of the problems with this script go away. Yep. Because yeah. everything because they would be able to if they're filing a twenty two fifty five action, which is what's called, they are you can do everything they do legally. Right. Yeah. So even though I was rolling my eyes quite a bit, I thought it was pretty silly of a movie. I would say I'd be looking forward to an, another one. I think mm-hmm. that there's potential here. I think there's yes. stuff they can do with it. And uh, and so I would encourage them to 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 make another one. Keep going. Yes, it would be nice, especially if they the one other thing I would hope they would do is if they could differentiate a bit more what some of their particular what the two leads did. Because it was nice to have someone who went off and did the forensic stuff. But there's so yeah. much other types of in, of interesting ways to do investigations. And I think if they gave the other friend and the male lead, if they gave mm-hmm. them more distinctive things to do so that you... Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a bit of a sucker for broadcast dramas where they, you have these niches where everyone has their own specialty. And I think they could develop that a bit more, but they have time mm-hmm. and they could easily do that because they'll have had time to yeah. learn and grow. And and I think that they could have fun with them all just sort of part of the justice warriors idea. Mm-hmm. That is fun. Yeah. So there's potential here. I mean, I'd probably give it mm, like a 3.5, 3. 3.25, something like that. Crowns. Yeah. I'd probably give it maybe two and a half three yeah uh, i mean i was still in general entertained even though I, it was silly but uh yeah something like that 3.25 uh crowns uh so w- let us know if you're listening what you think of this movie it, what you would give it and what you thought of the clues and the you know some of the the legal accuracy <laughs> on display uh, we'd love to hear in the comment section or on <laughs> twitter and uh, thanks so much for coming on and doing this. This was a blast. Well, it was fun. Thank you so very much. I really appreciate this. It's yeah. Been fun. So if people want to follow you on Twitter, uh, how do they do that? My Twitter handles B B E A U B U T T S eight four one eight five. Great. And we'll have that in the description. People can follow you and, uh, and yeah, again, let us know what you think of all the things we talked about. We'd love to hear your thoughts. And uh, please, uh, if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews for the podcast. That really helps us so much. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. Check that out. Also, uh, make sure you're following the podcast, the Homeworkies Pod and Homeworkies Podcast, all of our social media. If you're watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have our patron group, which is the biggest way that you can support us. And uh, and we sure appreciate that. We have watch alongs. It's so much fun. And uh, and then we also have our merch store. You can get tons of fun homework inspired merch. So check that out. And thanks again, James. And we'll talk to you all later. Bye, everyone.